Kitchen, Canterbury Trails Farm. We are pressure canning squash. I have a mixture of yellow squash and zucchini, and we're going to be raw packing them and then pressure cooking them. I have an all-American canner, so that means I don't have a gasket. One thing you need to do before you start canning with an all-American is take just some vegetable oil and go around the top rim of your canner. This is going to help just create a better seal. And my water going on low. And I have my, I'm doing pint jars and I have them in my actual water best canner because I've also been doing pears all week. And I just have those sterilizing. If you are doing the oil on the no gasket canner, I don't do that usually between every batch. I just do it before I begin. Next thing I need to do with my my pressure canner is there's a little cleaning rod and you can order this. Um, I ordered this from I think Chef's Design pressure cooker company but they have all this kind of appliance things. And you're just going to take this little, it looks like a little key, and you're going to just take it down in your vent. And that just makes sure that there's just nothing in there. And usually before I get started, I'll do it from both directions. Tip for, I've been pressure cooking as long as I have. I still have a handwritten, it's in a plastic bag so it can't get wet, just my steps. And I have it, I just use a cookbook holder, and I put that on the microwave. I have my lids simmering in a pan. I have my pressure canner on low just so the water's getting warm. The lid off. I've got my rings over here in a pile. And I've got my jars sterilizing. I also have a kettle full of water because we're going to raw pack. So I'm not going to be cooking my squash. I'm just going to be pouring boiling water over the squash before I put it in the canner. Okay, I've previously cut all of my zucchini. I have zucchini and I have yellow squash. And I just sort of cut them anywhere from a fourth to a half an inch, sort of like a pickle chip, oh, a thicker pickle chip. You don't want to do them too thin because they do have a tendency to get mushy. It doesn't matter for me because usually I'm adding these to casseroles and everything. So, But if you start out a little thicker, you're probably good. You towel down from my jars. I have my jar funnel, which I may or may not use. I'm probably going to end up using my hands and packing them in. My jar lifter ready. I have my lid lifter ready to help get the hot lids out of the water. Okay, my water is almost finished boiling, so I'm going to go ahead and get my jars out. What I'm going to do, I want to start filling my jars with my squash and push them down a little bit. You want to leave an inch of headspace. When you cook something, it cooks down a little bit and you get a little bit more in there. But now you can add a teaspoon, a half to a half a teaspoon to a full teaspoon of salt if you wish. I prefer to do my veggies with no seasoning. So that way I'm free to use them in any way for any people. The jars full of the squash. You want to pour the boiling water over them and you want to leave an inch of headspace. Towel, even though we weren't really dealing with anything messy, I'm just going to go around the rims of my jars just to make sure that I don't have anything on there that would see I had a seed there so there was something that would cause the jar not to seal. I pre-simmered lids down and a ring on the lid and I want to just do it fingertip tight. Don't crank it. I'm going to lower that into my canner. My jars are in the canner. I'm going to put my lid of my canner on. Yours may be different than mine, but I have little lines that I have to line up. I'm choosing the knobs on opposite sides, I'm going to screw it closed. At this point, I'm going to turn my canner up. 
If I didn't note before, you want to make sure you have the canning rack that comes with your canner in the bottom because you don't want your jars just sitting on the bottom of the canner. If you don't have a canning rack, you can fold a dish towel or you can also, there's like a round pie or cookie cooling racks will usually fit in there. And you can also buy replacement racks um, from the company where your canner is made. Okay, I'm going to heat my canner up when I start seeing steam or I'm going to turn on my timer for seven minutes and we're going to allow it to blow steam for seven minutes. Just a note, I don't think I mentioned, you want to make sure that you filled your canner with two to three inches of water. That's what I was saying, I was letting the water warm up while I was preparing the vegetables. Also consult your manual for whatever brand of canner you have because it may be more or less depending on the manufacturer's suggestions. Okay, my canner is just starting to blow steam, so I'm going to put on my timer for seven minutes. It is perfectly normal if you see water and sputtering happening around your safety valve and you will also start seeing some water and not a lot but some sort of spitting of this valve over here that will happen as you get closer. So when my timer goes off, I don't know if you can see, you can sort of see the steam here. I'll be putting my, my weight on for 10 pounds and I'm going to be processing, these are pints, so I'm going to be processing it at 25 minutes. If you're doing quarts, you need to leave it in for 30 minutes. And if you have a mixture of quarts and pints, you always have to choose the time for the largest jar that you're using. So if you're doing quarts and pints, you need to run it for 30 minutes. As it nears the, top, the end of the seven minutes, it will start to get louder. You'll also start noticing as your kettle is releasing steam, you'll start to see your pressure dial go up. Now my, my gauge is slightly off my little stick thing, I don't know what you call it on the gauge, doesn't, it, doesn't go necessarily all the way down. So I have long ago put permanent marker adjustments, like that's the start point and that's when I get to 10. Almost everything I do is 10. So you'll see your, your dial creep up towards that 10. Okay, the timer's gone off, so now I'm going to set my weight. At this point, you'll start seeing the dial increase at a faster rate, and that's when the sort of the back and forth dance begins on adjusting your burner to keep it at a steady heat. You're not going to start your processing time until you've reached your pressure weight. So when it gets to that red dot, we've hit 10, and at that point we'll turn our timer on for the full processing time of 25 minutes. You can really see how much faster it starts creeping up as soon as you put that weight on. because It's no longer releasing any pressure or releasing any steam. It's holding it in now. know my heat in my stove or stove top because I do this. I'm going to start decreasing my heat because I am almost at that red dot. The more you do it, the more you'll be familiar with what you need to do for your particular stove. When it hits that red dot is when we are going to start listening for our jiggles. We want one to four jiggles per minute. If you have less, you need to turn up your heat. If you have more than four jiggles, you need to turn down your heat. I'm fixing to hit it, and when, as soon as I hit that, I'm going to hit my timer for 25 minutes. You can really hear the action going on in there now. Water is boiling. There it is. Okay, now I know my I know that this is going to be up too high. So I'm going to turn it down. And you might find that you even have to turn it off if it just keeps going. You don't want it to know that okay, there we go.
that was two. Now we're on a third. Okay, I've now started a new minute, so now I, I need to time again. You'll have to do this for about, I don't know, it seems to me about 10 minutes or so till you get it totally, sometimes less. Sometimes I hit it right on and I, I get it perfect the first time and it does its one one to four jiggles and then, you know, for each minute and, and you know, I can sit there and read a magazine or do the dishes, but I don't leave the kitchen. I'm not getting any jiggles. I'm turning my heat up a little bit. So I may have turned it down too far the last time. The pressure sort of holding steady over here. Okay, I got zero jiggles for that last minute. So I have turned it up and it is fixing to jiggle. So let's see what happens on this minute. This one. Okay, that jiggle is way too long, so I'm turning my heat down again. Okay, there we go. So we've got, we've count that as one. So let's, we're on a new minute, so let's start over. Here we go. one. Okay, that was one in one minute. So if it holds to one in one minute, that's good. So you just have to keep working at it until you get that consistent one to four jiggles, no less, no more. And sometimes it's a back and forth dance that lasts for a little bit. Sometimes you get it right. So back when it's time to turn off the burner and we'll discuss what we do next. timer's gone off so I'm going to turn off my heat and I'm just going to leave the weight on and I need to wait till my canner reads zero and then I will remove the weight. My canner usually takes at least a half hour to get back to zero. My gauge is now at zero so I'm going to take off my weight and then I'm going to unscrew my top and we're going to take out the jar. of the canner it is not unusual to see them still boiling from the jar and sometimes they'll do that for a few hours afterward. That has been pressure canning squash and zucchini. Thank you for joining us today at Canterbury Trails Farm.